Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this episode, what we're going to try to do is showcase the idea of using hand tracking in virtual reality. Stick around. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right, Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is going to be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight simming experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's gonna be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so what we're trying to do today is we're essentially, this is actually my hand. And I will have a picture of the hand tracking device that I'm currently using on the Pimax 8KX. Now we're using this with OpenXR and a bunch of other applications that are included with this, which I will be showcasing at the end of the video. I will tell you guys right off the gate that there is still many more settings that I need to adjust before I could even remotely call this feasible. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lot of tweaking that's involved in this process. This is definitely a very time consuming process. I actually had my daughter helping me with this one to try to get the settings dialed into a point where it would be feasible. But it's certainly not at the moment in, in the aspect of it's not refined. But I want to show you guys the potentials that it actually does have. So let's go ahead and get started first. And then I'm going to show you guys at the end the software that we use. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. Now, I would never use this for your flight controls. I'm still using throttle and stick for the actual thr flight controls. Uh, it's just not feasible enough yet to be used with anything else. And we're not going to go through all correct procedures, things like that, checklist. This is the idea. This is just to showcase here. But one of the things that I will do here is let's sort of adjust the day and time here. And again, this is using just your hands. And that's what makes this a pretty slick feature. So let's see here is that. Oops. That's sort of I'm trying to find a time of day where the cockpit is the most illuminated, but I guess that's what we got. Okay. All right, so now Let's try things like crash bar, battery, switches, nav lights. Let's make sure our ignition is set to on. Auxiliary boost pumps to on. Fuel selection, nope, should be manual. And let's see here. Everything else should be good for engine start. Yep, I was going to say the throttle's in the wrong spot. There we go. All right, let's see what else we got down here. I think everything else over here, parking brake set, landing gear handle down. There we go. Turn that on. And this is just using hand tracking, essentially with something like Leap Motion, um, that have really come down in pricing quite a bit. It's not near as expensive as they used to be. So now we're going to go ahead and take our starter. There 
There she goes. Monitoring that NG. Move it into low idle. Looking for 53% here. Oh, no, we lost our engine. There she goes. That was weird. Maybe that was just a graphical issue. Go up into high idle. And up over the gate to flight idle. And again, the idea is just to show you guys examples here of how this works. Initial separator, we know we're going to need that when we're on the ground, especially when we're ready for taxi. Uh, let's set our pressurization. There's that. Let's come back here. Ignition to auto. So there we boost pumps to auto. Fuel selection to auto. Oxygen on. Let's get that landing light or a taxi light. There we go. Where's it? Oh, and autopilot and trim systems. Oh, I didn't mean to let go of it. There we go. So hopefully you guys are at least starting to see some of the advantages here. Now, even right down to Oh, I just realized I was changing that. Let's come over here. Uh, let's see, that's our MFD. Oh, wait, did I want the PFD? Let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, let's back up. And like I said, it's got a lot, I still have a lot of um, tweaking to do to make it right. Oh, no, that was wrong. That's, what, what, let's see, what is it? Case says, I think it is, right? I always forget what the actual ICAO is here. Yep, Sedona, there we go. And let's say we were going to go down to... Tucson. Okay, this is not a perfect system. Okay, I want to make that very, very clear. There is nothing perfect about this yet. But I also, like I keep saying, I have many more settings that I need to tweak. There's many more things that need to be adjusted. There's many more things that I can, let's see here. Having trouble grabbing that. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure why that's giving me trouble. So I don't know if that's an issue with the cockpit of the aircraft. I don't think this is an issue with the tracker because if I come down here, for example, it works just fine. You guys can see that I can very quickly grab it. Let's try this as a, an example. There you go. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure this is an issue with the cockpit up here and it looks like it's actually trying to rotate, but it's not working. Anyway, so again, by all means, not perfect. But I wanted just to show you guys some of the things that are starting to work. And there's tweaking. Again, there are, there are settings, sensitivity settings, things like that that you can do that will certainly help make the situation a bit better. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute and showcase this opportunity. So now let's go ahead and get down into the software so I can show you guys what you use and how this all works together, okay?
All right, guys. So the first thing that you're going to want is OpenXR Toolkit. Now, let's talk about what OpenXR Toolkit is for just a moment. OpenXR Toolkit creates a runtime, basically an interface between your VR headset and whatever simulator that you happen to be using. What it essentially does is replaces the use of, for example, Steam VR. Steam VR obviously serves its purpose and was very nice to have for quite a long time when there weren't any other options. However, when it comes to the comparison of, for example, OpenXR, it is garbage. Um, and what I mean by garbage is the performance. Uh, Steam VR is extremely taxing. It's not particularly efficient. And um, it uh, definitely doesn't run near as smoothly as OpenXR. The other really cool thing about OpenXR is the ability to adjust many of the settings right on the fly from inside the headset. Things such as coloring, um, distortion, your masking size, clarity, all these things, resolution, can be overridden directly from inside the headset. Now, depending on the application, you may have to restart your VR uh, experience, which in Microsoft Flight Simulator is very easy. It's just a matter of hitting Control Tab, going back to 2D, and then hitting Control Tab again, and going back to VR. Uh, so it makes it very, 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 very handy to have on board. Now, what we're going to be checking out here, guys, is we're going to go to features, and you can see here under the OpenXR Toolkit, you have hand tracking. Now, I'm going to have a link to the OpenXR Toolkit here down in the description below, so make sure that you guys can follow along. And if you go to the hand tracking section under features, it walks you through everything you need to do. Um, and you can see there is Microsoft Flight Simulator sitting there as an example. So, and they even have it titled there. Now, you have everything from supported headsets that you guys can click on, and it takes you down uh, further down the list, and it breaks down what headsets are actually available, talks about firewall exclusions and things like that. Here's what the OpenXR Toolkit, for example, looks like inside of VR um, and uh, some of the features that you're able to do. Now, for me, in my case, I use the Pimax uh, settings, so we have right here, um, as far as how this would all work tells you what software you need to grab. And this is why this is the only link that I'm showing is because I want you guys to follow the instructions. This will be the only link to this page that I have down in the description. So make sure again, click on the open extra toolkit, go to hand tracking, follow the instructions. Make sure you guys click on the associated links down below. Get all of these things installed. And then once you can, once you open up the OpenXR toolkit, you're able to, as you can see here, uh, set up the controller emulation. Now, one of the things that you are definitely going to want that, let me make sure that this is listed because it may not be. So give me just a moment. Oh, it does. Absolutely. So what you're going to be looking for is another app. And I will have this app as well too, the OpenXR Hand Toolkit. So first you have your offsets, which allows you to change the position of the, remember what it's doing. It's taking your hands and emulating a physical controller. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is first set up the orientation. Basically, how do, based on the position of my hands, what is the position of the controller? And one of the things that's very handy to do that with is this line right here, hand skeleton. And you can turn this off. Um, and once you get it configured and comfortable, I do recommend you do that because you may not actually, what I have found for me in Microsoft Flight Simulator is the position of my hands are actually too high in comparison to where I want the controllers. A, I'm a big guy, you know, and I've got other, you know, the joystick and things like that. I'm not flying with a true to one yoke and all that good stuff. So uh, you may want to actually put the controller offset down below the position that your that your hands are actually at, and you also need to make sure that your hands are always in view of the cameras. Okay, so um, once you get all that configured, then you can come in here and and change your translations, change the orientation, set the control, and then you can decide how you want uh, to set your grip. Again, emulating basically creating the pointer. Okay, whatever hand is gripping, quote unquote, that's the hand that's going to actually be controlling. Now, I'm only using, in the video, I'm only using the right hand. Um, I didn't want the left hand engaged. I did that on purpose. Um, and it had to do with some of the weird oddities that I was experiencing as far as accidentally grabbing the yoke. Uh, that was driving me crazy, so I disabled that. Um, I just want to be able to, you know, flick lights on, maybe adjust a radio, maybe click a menu on, a, on the MFD like I was showing you guys. Um, but I didn't want necessarily... I want to still be able to fly with um, uh, the throttle, the physical throttle and stick. Then you have your bindings. 
basically, okay, thumb press, okay, pushing your thumb down onto the top of your finger. Pinch, you guys know what the pinching action is. Index bend, just literally think of it as a, uh, um, you know, pulling a trigger with your finger, right? Um, you guys can set these up to do various um, actions with inside of the simulator and customize it to your own. Now, one of the really cool things about this particular software is it actually starts out with an, a um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 configuration. Now, this is mine that I created, but it does have a default profile that it starts with specifically for FS 2020. Okay, and then you have your different gestures. This sets the distance in which the gestures can actually uh, take effect, right? Um, and then everything from your click threshold, you can set up different uh, gestures that are custom based on what you want to do. Um, and that's where this screen here comes into play, tells you what all of the different um, locations of the hand that are listed inside of the application can do. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Okay. It's, it's extremely confusing getting into this. And I've, I've been at this for about two days. That's why I didn't pump out a video yesterday as I was working on it pretty, pretty aggressively trying to figure out everything and, and how to get it. And there's still a lot more for me to learn. There's still a lot more for me to read, but I wanted to showcase this with you guys because leap motion is not as expensive as it used to be. You can pick up a leap motion camera and mount it to your headset for, I think right around a hundred dollars, if not less. Um, there's many ways to do hand tracking now. Um, and uh, the Leap Motion software I know has a couple of different plugins that can be used with other devices that make things pretty easy. Now, as I said earlier, mine uh, I got directly from Pimax. I've actually had it for a long time, just never found an application that it worked with. So it was really cool to actually see this, see this in action. Um, and it's definitely got a ton of potential. There's many, many more settings that I have to go through. These are the settings that I was talking about as far as there's so much still for me to adjust and tweak and, and get it dialed in to where it works nicely and smoothly. Um, and that's going to take a lot of time. It's, it's definitely time consuming. So I don't want to lie to you guys about that either. This is not something that you're going to be like, oh, yay, cool. I'm done. Got it. You know, plug and play and you're off to the races. Guarantee you're going to be in and out of VR, constantly swapping back and forth, adjusting this, adjusting that, adjusting this. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a pain to get set up. And that's because a lot of that comes down to the technology is still relatively in its infancy, right? There hasn't been a ton of development in the way of hand-eye tracking um, in, in regards to VR simulation, uh, especially when it comes to, again, like we're seeing here, the, the advanced cockpits and advanced functionality of using your hands to operate a lot of this stuff. Um, so it's, it's going to be tough. Um, but if you guys dedicate the time to it and you guys already have the hardware for it, uh, you can really find yourself in a pretty interesting situation in virtual reality. Um, I definitely see the benefit of doing this at the very least, like I said, the way I'm doing it with one hand, um, it's definitely awesome. I did not like the idea. I tried using the yoke and throttle with it and I found that it was still too buggy. Now, that is very, very likely, as I said, due to I have more settings that I need to tweak and get right. But what I was experiencing is like when I was trying to hold onto the yoke or something like that, uh, it would it would lose control very quickly. I would just all of a sudden let go of it um, without you know intending to. And so obviously, like on takeoff, letting go of the yoke that could be bad, you know. <laughs> so I stick to the physical hardware. Plus, I like that tactile feel of having the stick and throttle in my hands. Um, so that's not something that I want to use it for, but, uh, for example, something that I did use it for was the trim wheel in ironically enough, the JP logistics 152 that we're seeing right here. Um, I did the same thing and I was using the trim wheel and that was pretty awesome. It worked very, very well, uh, swapping the, or not swapping the fuel things, but turning the fuel valves on, uh, adjusting the radios, the transponder, um, all that stuff worked pretty well. Um, I think one of the hardest things that I experienced with this was like turning on the magneto and then switching it to start. Um, I would try to give it that full turn and it just wouldn't do it. But again, I'm wondering if that's again, a, a tweak that I need to make. So let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know what you guys think about the way virtual reality is changing. And, and if this is something that you guys are interested in, um, because this definitely has the potential to go a long way. I think one of the harder points is going to be, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator slash Asobo uh, need to also optimize the VR interaction to something that's going to work a bit better with this. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's obviously all it, it all comes together. Everything has to work together in order to, to really work well. Um, but uh, we will 
we will keep uh, posting videos on this stuff as it continues to develop and as I continue to tweak it. If I find those golden settings that really make it wow, um, I'll definitely make another video. But I wanted to show you guys this. I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to try it for yourselves and know that it was out there. The other thing that I'm going to be trying this with, just so you guys have the heads up in case you're interested, is DCS World. Uh, DCS World, I could if, if I can get it dialed in, I can definitely definitely see some very serious advantage to being able to use this in dcs um dcs i mean you're constantly on the buttons whether it be your mfds your targeting systems you know your radios whatever it may be uh your arming switches especially like in the older aircraft the warbirds uh it's constant constant um so i'm kind of interested to see how that all comes together with that and obviously i'll be sharing that with you guys as well as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button for me. And uh, make sure you guys comment below and tell me your thoughts because I'd love to hear from you guys. Stay safe and healthy, folks, and I'll see you in the next one.